Hello, my name is Claudio Osorio. I'm a student at Florida State University, and I'm currently taking COP3252, which is Advanced Programming with Java with Dr. Katie Broadhead. Today, I would like to talk to you about my final project for this course. There were many options to select from, and I actually selected Simon, which is a fun game. But let me tell you what it is about. Simon is defined as an electronic game that helps short-term memory. It was invented by Ralph H. Bauer and Howard Morrison. And it was very popular in the 19, 1980s. For my project, I actually looked for the manual for the game. For There, were, there are many versions. I selected the version that was made in 1987. And I selected this game because it was very popular, it was very fun to play. After I watched the, how the game was, I decided to, to implement this game. And it's very fun, I can say it's not only fun for kids, but also for adults. And it helps my short-term memory because it has some patterns, sounds, and, and lights people have to remember and press. I'll go ahead and show you how the game is. So as you can see, the game gives you some light, some patterns. Um, in the manual, they're called signals. So that's how I call them in my comments of the code. And after some buttons are pressed, sorry, after some buttons are, they light up in a specific order, the player has to do the same in the next turn. So as you can see, it's red, green, and blue. But this time she made a mistake at blue, so she lost the game. So for this game, I prepare some icons. Um, I look for some graphics. And down here, you can see the credits for the images I used. I, create, I created a UI in Photoshop. Um, I look for a font background and then um, some cover. And I left uh, some transparency. For where the buttons should be. I was trying to look forward for a uh, easy to look at and a uh, simple UI but that was effective and that I actually looked like the real game. And I went a little bit into sound editing with Audacity. Um, I looked for some sounds online because I wanted the real sounds but I couldn't found it, find them. So I selected some um, closed um, sounds that sound really fun and I could and prepare the sounds to match um, in the game so all the sounds last about the same time in milliseconds which really helps in, in, the, in the program. As you can see there are many resources I, I used. Um, the first thing you can see over here is that I have um, three high scores. These files are created if they don't exist, and if they exist, they get replaced when the new high score is, happens. Um, these files contain the name and the, of the player and the high score. Down here I have the images. This is the background image we saw before. I also have the icon, and then I have the UI that covers the buttons. And down here I have all the sounds that I use in the game. Every button, there are four major buttons. Um, the blue, green, red, and yellow. They, uh, each one has a specific sound, and I have a specific sound too for the for the defeat when you lose the game or when you win the game. And this is the first look at the game. Pressing here launches the game using the settings selected down here. Um, over here you enter the player name. So. This is to be the first thing you should do when you enter, you enter your name. And then down here there are many settings. There's an interval and a lot of time. Um, I start with a lot of time. This is settings. These are settings for the difficulty. The lot of time um, is the time you have to press a button. So if you think too much or you don't remember, let's say you spend um, five seconds, the game is gonna, it's gonna be over. For you, you're gonna lose the game because you spend too much time. So if you go easy, you have a lot more time to actuate in the game. 
if you select hard, you have less time um, between rounds, so you have to be quicker. The interval is the time it takes between the sequences. So every time a button lights up, um, then when the game is showing you what to do, let's say it goes green, red, and then blue, um, the time it, take, it, it takes to go from green to red and to blue, this will be the interval. So if you go hard, it will go green, red, blue very fast. If you go easy, it will go green, it will wait some time, it will go then red, and then it will uh, go to blue. So it gives you more time to learn the pattern. So that's the levels of difficulty here. And next I'd like to show you, um, this is when you select to enter the player name. This is foolproof, of course. And next, um, this will be when you launch the game with the setting selected. So this is the first look at the main game or the game where you're gonna actually play. Uh, as you can see, there are the classic buttons. Um, let me put the names here. The four classic buttons, green, red, blue, and yellow. Over here, you have the high score. If there is none, it will show player one and then zero as the high score. Uh, you also have here in the name of the frame, it shows you the name of the pl player and the icon of the, the game. Down here, this this will be like the logo. Um, if we go back one second here, you can see like the real game has the high score here and it also has the name. So, because this is a online, uh, it's not online, it's like a digital version of the game. What I did is I changed this to be um, text or instructions. So it tells you to watch the sequence and then it tells you to repeat the sequence. It tells you when you win or when you lose. Uh, down here we have the current score. So when you correctly press the buttons, it will let you know that you're earning points. Um, of course, it doesn't give you points when it's teaching you the sequence, only when you do something correctly. There is a button that I added that is the repeat button. Um, the, rep uh, the repeat sequence, it repeats the last sequence it, it was uh, telling you about. So when you're learning the sequence, um, if, if you forget it, if you press this button here, you, you could actually see it again. So it kind of helps you, but um, I changed it, I changed it a little bit. So if you have more than three points, you will lose three points for pressing the repeat button. So if you have three points, you will go back to zero. So it kind of tells you not to press this button too much. So let's see the game in action. Over here, you can see the UI of the game and the settings. Next, you select the settings and you can go ahead and enter your name. By default, the name will be player one and the maximum amount of cartridges are 15. So names more than 50 don't get entered. So there's a countdown and then the game starts with the sequence. It tells you green, for example, was the first sequence and then it says green and red. And you can see the score increments. So I entered blue by mistake and I lost the game, but I have a new high score because the previous high score was zero. So then the high score now is five and you can see it at the top now. It has my name and the high score. Next time you play the game, the high score will be the same. But this time I selected the, the medium difficulty and there is a high score for each difficulty. So this is difficulty here is medium and there is no previous high score, so it will be zero. And right now I'm showing you when the game is showing you the sequence, you can press other buttons and it will, it will not lose the game. So nothing crazy will happen if you press a button while the game is showing you a sequence. And the score is increasing. And I lose the game. And then a new high score is saved for the medium difficulty. Again, you can do any combination of intervals and a lot of time. And you can change the name of the player anytime. 
And let's launch the game at the highest difficulty, which will be high and high. As you can see, the time it takes from for the sequence to show up between button and button is much lower. It will be yellow, yellow, blue, and yellow. And it, the game tells you to watch, you see? Watch. And then repeat. There are 15 total um, rounds in the sequence. So every time there is a new light, a new signal that gets added to the sequence. But the game gets faster after round after the fifth turn and after the ninth and the thirteenth turn. So each difficulty implicitly has in the code uh, an increase in the sequence. So at the start, if you select hard, you, you will see it's a little bit faster. But as you go by, the game will get much, much faster than that. And because winning is so hard, I have an example of what will happen if you win. And that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the game. Thank you.